Hey guys, in this problem we're looking for the forces exerted on the diving board by these two little support beams on the left. The first part of the problem asks us to do this while ignoring the weight of the board itself. This is a statics problem, so we'll have to solve it by considering the fact that, assuming the board is in place and motionless, then its net torque should be zero, and net forces on it should also be zero. This might get a little tricky because we have a bunch of different forces acting on the diving board, so the first thing I'm going to do is draw a free body diagram. So let's say this is our board. I'm kind of blowing this up pretty big since I don't know how well it will show up in the video. But we got a few different forces here. We got the weight of the board acting downwards from the center of mass. This is mg. There's also going to be the weight of the diver standing on its tip. I'm going to call that a big mg. The force from support A is going to be pulling it down. So F sub A. And then there's going to be the force from support B that's actually putting it up. So, unfortunately, I kind of drew my little force is in the way here. Let me fix that. There we go. So the force from... Hang on. There we go. So the force from support B points upward right here. At least that's a rough approximation of how they're positioned in the diagram. So now let's take a look at the torques and forces on this. We'll go with a standard coordinate system where up is positive, to the right is positive in the x direction, and a positive torque is one that is counterclockwise. So first, let's write a torque equation for what's going on here, a net torque equation. We know this should be zero if we're at rest, but we need to analyze the components. And let's say that our pivot point is right here where, a is, where f sub a is. This is going to be helpful to us for, in our math because it means we can ignore f sub a. Because a force acting directly on the pivot can just be ignored. That means that there, since, since there's no lever arm. So first the torque from f sub b is going to be positive since it's pointing upwards, which means it goes along with the counterclockwise direction. So that's f sub b multiplied by its lever arm. Its lever arm is going to be one meter as the diagram tells us. So that's what this distance is, one meter. The problem specifically asks us to ignore this mg term, for part a at least. And then the force from the weight of the diver at the tip, that's going to be minus, because we can see it's pointing downwards, so that's going to push the board in a clockwise direction, which is negative. So that is big M G multiplied by that lever arm which we can see from the diagram, is a total of 4 meters. That's 4 meters. Meters. So doing a bit of numeric simplification, this is just saying that F sub B, F sub B times 1 is just F sub B, F sub B minus 4 times mg, so 4 mg is equal to 0, which can be simply written as F sub B equals 4 mg which means we can find F sub B, one half of the problem, pretty simply by just plugging in our values for the mass of the diver and the gravitational acceleration. So F sub B is equal to 4 multiplied by 52 kilograms, the weight of the diver, multiplied by the gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared. Put this into a calculator, and we find a weight, or a force, of about 2,000 38 newtons, and this is directed upwards. Uh, and you might also want to write this in scientific notation. So 2.0 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3 newtons. That's another way you can write the same answer, but both are right. But the problem wants us to find F sub A as well, not just F sub B. But the way we defined our setup, we can't find that using the torque alone. So let's use a net force equation. Because we know from statics that if the diving board is at rest, the net force in the y direction should be zero as well. So if we look back at our free body diagram, we can see that F sub A is pointing downwards, uh, MG is also pointing downwards, and F sub B is pointing upwards. So let's take account for that in our force equation. So by, the, by our coordinate system, F sub B is positive because it points upwards, minus MG, which is downwards, minus f sub a, which is also downwards, and this is all equal to zero. But since we know both f sub b and mg, all we got to do is 
plug in the numbers we just found earlier to solve for f sub a. We established earlier that f sub b is 4mg, so 4mg minus mg is just 3mg, so this is just 3 times 52 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Put that into a calculator, and we find an f sub a of 1,500 newtons, and this is pointed downwards. So that is the answer to part A of the problem, but part B gets a little trickier because now we are asked to take into account the board's mass, and we're even given its mass, so that's pretty nice. But yeah, this is going to get a little more complicated. We're basically going to repeat the exact same process, except now we're going to take into account the small mg. So the net force is once again going to be zero, but now we got a new term in the mix. So of course, F sub B didn't change. It's F sub B times one newton. I'm not even, or one meter. I'm not even going to write that part. Minus, but now, now we're going to take into account this force right here, which is acting at the center of gravity of the board, which is going to be at a halfway distance. So if we know that the full board is four meters, then this halfway distance right here, I'm actually going to use a different color to make it more obvious what I'm drawing. This halfway distance right here to where the center of mass is, is going to be 2 meters. So that means that for this part of the problem, it, the, uh, the torque for the center of mass, the torque for the weight is small mg multiplied by 2.0 meters. Then minus the weight from the diver, which we discussed earlier, is 4 big mg. And yeah, now we just got to solve this for f sub b using the same process we went through in the previous part of the problem. So f sub b is equal to 4 big mg plus 2 small mg. So yeah, this is 4 times 52 kilograms times the 9.8 meters per second squared plus 2 times the mass of the diving board, which is given to us as 28 kilograms, times, again, 9.8. And if you put this into a calculator, then this gives us a force, or, yeah, a force of 2,600 newtons directed up. So that's F sub B for part B. And now we will only use the same process we used in part A to solve for F sub A. So again, looking at our free body diagram, we can see F sub B is pointing upwards. The weight from the diver is pointing downwards. Minus. Now the weight from the board itself is downwards. That's the term we're adding, so it's negative. And then minus F sub A, because that's downwards as usual. So again, we're just going to rewrite this equation, solve it for F sub A. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. So now we algebraically solve this for F sub A. So F sub A is equal to, and all we're doing, and all we're doing is just adding F sub A, F sub A to both sides of the equation. So we just end up with F sub A on the right side of the equation, and everything else on the left just stays the same. So F sub A is equal to F sub B, which we just found a moment ago, is 4 big MG plus 2 small mg, that's the f sub b term, but then minus big mg, then minus small mg. So a few of these terms can obviously be simplified down a bit, because 4 big mg minus single big mg is obviously just 3 big mg, and then plus 2 small mg minus small mg is of course just 1 small mg. So our final formula is 3 big mg plus small mg. So all we got to do is plug that into our calculator. So this is equal to 3 multiplied by the big mass of 52 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared plus the mass of the diving board which is 28 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And if we put that into a calculator then we get a force for F sub A of about 1,800 newtons, and this time it's pointing downwards. 
And that is it for the entirety of this problem. That is it for every part of this problem. That is it for this video. I hope it helped you out. If it did, please share this with your friends or consider subscribing. That'll help me out a lot in making more videos just like this one. And if you have a request for a future video or a comment, uh, you just leave a question down below and I'll take a look when I can. And I'll try to help you out as best as I can. But that's all for now. And I hope you all have a lovely night. Bye-bye.